to ETV News. On this evening's edition of Zoom In, we asked the question, how high up is renewable energy on South Africa's agenda? This year's Industrial Efficiency Conference took place in Pretoria this week. Delegates have been debating ways that government and business can adopt more sustainable and greener initiatives. Coal remains the backbone of South Africa's electricity supply. It's cheap, but remains costly to the environment. And some researchers say the country is not taking full advantage of its competitive advantage um, in, the, in the renewable energy sector. In the U.S., a new report says solar and wind power is growing rapidly and is fast becoming more effective than coal. It's projected that by the year 2050, more of or most of the world's el electricity supply will be generated by solar, PV, and wind. So this is said to be a part of government's integrated resource plan going forward. But are we moving fast enough? And to answer that question, we're joined um, on the line. We have the National Cleaner Production Center's National Industrial Energy Project, uh, man Project Manager, rather, Alf Hartzenberg. He joins us live now via uh, Skype in Pretoria. Um, Alf, a good afternoon to you. Thanks for joining us. It's evening already, isn't it? You've had a Thank busy couple of days. Yes, good. Thanks for joining yes. us. You've had a busy couple of days with this conference. Talk to us about the intention behind it. The Industrial Efficiency Conference is held every two years, September every two years. And it's an opportunity for us as the NCPC not to listen, to listen to industry, to listen to government, to share and to provide feedback. And this year, particularly this year, the conference provided an excellent uh, platform for networking, something I've not evidenced, uh, I've, I've not seen before in the three earlier conferences. So in that regard, growing in stature every two years. Yeah. Does that speak to a, a growing interest in, in starting to really invest and move towards greener energy in South Africa? And, and if you answer that question, perhaps you can talk to us about who've been the slower members that needed to come to the table earlier, whether it was business or government or both? Well, yes, I think, I think we can contribute the increasing interest and dependence on the NCPC services by industry, largely to the opportunity of renewable energy. But I think a lot of that is because of the carbon tax. And I think the carbon tax has caught the attention of industry in a big way. It may be diluted in terms of the amount of the high thresholds and the amount of allowances, but I think it's, it's grabbed the attention of business, big and small, in terms of how it will impact them and what it will do. As far as your second part of your question is concerned, Who's dragging their feet? Really, it's a carrot and stick approach. And I think both industry and government in this area can do a lot more than they have been doing. Renewable energy has never been our first choice within the NCPC because we've always considered energy efficiency to be the first fuel. So renewable energy is critical and plays an important part for businesses that seek to insulate them against power outages. And I think renewable energy is a wonderful option for those that, are, that have matured in terms of energy efficiency. But certainly in terms of our top five um, offerings and services and focus areas, renewable energy is right up there. Yeah. Well, what other, what other suggestions then do you put on the table for business that is looking for energy efficiency but is not ready yet to go solar or hydro or wind? One of the first things we do is we start to look at how they're managing the current energy. And we look at how, we look at the low-hanging fruit, the opportunities that we can, we can undertake without spending any money. So the no low-cost opportunities are right there. And we should not underestimate the impact of behavior change by simply instilling greater awareness and buying from their staff. Mm. The businesses can achieve enormous sustainability for projects they implement today. So the, we would first focus on that. And, when, and be, besides energy efficiency and renewable energy, we have opportunities such as capturing waste streams like waste heat um, to develop co-generation systems and, de and, and generate electricity from that. Cement, cement plants in South Africa are looking at alternative fuels. That's an enormous opportunity. In Europe, cement kilns use 70% of the input fuel as alternative energy, as waste being recycled. Mm. In South Africa, that's less than 5%. So there's an enormous opportunity to work at that before we really seriously look at spending a lot of money on renewable energy. Yeah. You know, I, I'm interested in what, what the discussion became on the impact of um, anti-green um, actions that we've seen taken by businesses. A great example being the Doozy River in KZN. I mean, a massive spill there. Um, months are needed uh, still to clean that up. But did, did the discussion become business and their responsibility to clean up after themselves as well? That's a, neat, that's a very good point. And I think 
we need to drive that 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 responsibility far more strongly. Mm. Just as an example, the NCPC in its conference, uh, no bottled water. We stop we stop perpetuating PET bottles. Also, no paper printed programs. Everything was online. And if businesses become more mindful of how their actions impact the environment and more long term, instead of focusing on more short term. Uh, financial profits and financial targets, then I think we should start seeing a huge change and a reduction in the greenhouse gas emissions that this country is currently obscurely and disproportionately high uh, in South Africa. And then we can start to look at renewable energies to follow that. But renewable energies is really on a case-by-case -case basis where we would consider a renewable energy option in industry. But renewable energy should not be the first option. There are too many other low-hanging fruits we should look at picking first. Yeah, just to ensure that we're not having discussions in silos here. I mean, you had business in the room. You had environmentalists, I'm sure, um, as part of the discussion. Did you have government, whether it be the Department of Environmental Affairs, but more importantly, DTI perhaps also in the room? These are the policy writers of our country. Absolutely. You know, we are a program of DTI. DTI was there. The National Treasury was there. Um, I believe DOE and DEA may have been there as well. So besides besides government, we had industry, we had SMEs and a growing a growing market of SMEs that are entering the renewable energy space. I had a conversation with a young lady, an SME in Johannesburg, who's into the solar PV business, and they are seeking the support and guidance of the NCPC to help her target and zero in on the opportunities that, that exist in industry for her. So, Besides that, we had ESCOs, energy service companies, that they are bound and they're quite important in terms of driving implementation. And we had academia and we had representatives from foreign African uh, states as well, from Zimbabwe, from Ghana, from Uganda, from Rwanda. So it was good to see that there's, we're starting to break the, the down the, 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 these, these artificial borders in terms mm. of sharing and speaking to each other. Yeah, that's, that's really encouraging. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Alpha Hartzinberg there, he's with the National Cleaner Production Center and he's project manager of the Industrial um, Energy Efficiency Conference that has just taken place over the past two days. Well,